Hi, it's Lori from Dakota Relics. Come join me as I travel around the area searching for treasures that I can buy and then flip for a profit. You'll never know what I find unless you follow me. Come on, let's get shopping. Hi, it's Lori from Dakota Relics. Well, this video is going to be a little different. Um, we are under quarantine. I'm okay, I've tested negative, but my husband's been sick for about eight days now, so I can't go to work, I have to stay home. So I was thinking, what can I do to get my fix on, fix on thrifting? And I remembered there was an online auction coming up, so on Saturday, I participated in bidding on a few of the items on the online auction. Um, I wanna kind of go through how that works, um, there's also, you know, you, during quarantine, you could also do Facebook marketplace. You could do Craigslist and just line up, pick up spots that are no contact. They could, um, drop it off your doorstep and, and you can have the money waiting for them or, you know, they could drop it or you could go to their house and just stick the money in the mailbox if they agree to it. So there are ways to still thrift while you're in quarantine. Um, I'm going to insert a clip here that's going to show you what it looks like to do this during um, the actual auction so you can see how that process takes place. So just watch this clip and I'll be back in a minute. So I'm starting to bid on an online auction. Um, I'll show you the items I've got in a later haul. However, this is, I'm going to see if I can open it up bigger. This is an antique barber um, neck strip glass container. Here we go. That's what it looks like. And right now I am losing. So I am going to go back and see. Let's see. I'm going to bid. If you see this now, I'm going to bid $21. It's going to, I think this is going to be kind of a high end. Right now I lead, it says, and we're going to see if I win it. Now, what it, well, as soon as I place that bid, then it extends it for a minute. And if somebody else wants to bid, they can. Right now I have the bid for $21. See if I can get a little closer. You can see the time clicking away. Um, we'll see. And it ended and I won it for $21. So this is a local auction. Um, so I'll be able to pick these things up. I won't have to have them shipped. So now I'm going to go back and see what my next lot is. I pre Okay, so after that clip, um, a couple of things I want to ta uh, talk about is um, on almost all online auctions, there is going to be a buyer's premium. Um, so this particular auction actually is in my hometown here. And the internet auction premium was 18%. So whatever you bid, you're going to have to pay 18% above that because it was an internet auction. Um, even if you go to in-person auctions anymore, a lot of them do have like a, a premium set. Um, I know one current one is 10% that I used to go to. They too are not doing live auctions anymore. They're doing just online auctions. So... Um, but even in-person auctions at that place, you pay 10% of buyer premium. Now, I do have sales tax license, so I shouldn't have to pay sales tax um, since it will be taxed when I sell it. So anyways, um, that's kind of how it works. You can place your bids ahead of time on these uh, auctions, and you can do like a maximum bid. Um, and I do that, but then sometimes the day of the auction, I'm like, Oh my gosh, I just have to have that. I'm going to just go online and just bid to see how, how much it's going to go for. So once it's all done, this auction company, um, which happens to be called Last Chance Auctions here in my city, um, this auction, they send you an email. You sign up for a time to pick up and then you can do special instructions. So I just asked that um, due to the quarantine, if they could... You know, I'll pop my lid of the trunk open and could you just load it in the car? And they were happy to do that. So got my thrifting fix and I'm going to kind of go over some of the things that 
I bought or that I won. I did not win everything that I bid on. Um, and kind of go through the, the reasons why I bought it and, and, you know, what I thought it could go for. So my first item, I, I bought this because I've just never seen one before. I went online and only found one other one. And I do, do that a lot. So if I'm going to bid on something or if I see that there's something in the auction, um, I'm going to probably look up comps on the internet and see what they've sold for, how many are for sale. If the um, internet is flooded with the same item, probably it's not going to go that well. But this is very unique. This is a 45 um, record holder, probably from the 60s, and it's in the shape of a Ferris wheel. It does move. It has a wooden base. It does move. And you would put your records in these slots um, as a display or as, you know, just a storage piece. I think it's really cool. Like I said, there's only one that I saw and it had, you know, it never sold. It was just a picture, somebody explaining what it was. Um, it does have like the music staff in the middle, if you can see. This is all made out of wire. We were talking and you probably wouldn't want to display any current, like, really good records in here because there is some rust and if you leave them in their jackets it won't spin so it kind of destroys the display value but if you had old records you just wanted this as a display like in your um, game room or or whatever on top of a, a 1950s bar um, it's a great piece i ended up paying with the with the premium i've got all my prices written down with a premium um, right around $25, $24.78. I think I can get about $100 for this, but we'll see. I don't know. Um, another thing is whether you want to sell it on Etsy or eBay. This definitely qualifies for Etsy because it is old. However, since I have no idea what the price for something like this would be, it's hard for me to set a price, which you have to do in Etsy. So I may sell this on eBay and just let it go to the higher bidder, but we'll decide that later. So I'm going to get this out of our way and on to the next thing. All right, then I bought um, two art glass bowls. One might be an ashtray, I'm not sure, but you can use it for a bowl, for a candy dish, whatever. Art glass is kind of popular, um, especially if it's made in Italy. Um, let me find those pieces here. Um, oftentimes it's not marked. So one, tell, one way you can tell if art glass is, if it's a really good piece, is that the pontal or the bottom where it was actually blown um, is very smooth. If it's a piece made from China, they don't take the time to smooth and buff that out. These both have smooth pontals. The first is this piece. Like I said, it's, it's probably an ashtray, but it could be used for anything. It has really nice silver flaking in there. Um, and that is kind of a higher end glass too, as if it has filling gold flakes in it. Both of these pieces I bought for um, $14, so averages out to about seven a piece. And then the next one is this blue dish with the gold flaking in it. It has like a twisted design, really pretty, a white, a white background. Um, the only thing, and you're never going to probably be able to see this, but there's a huge air bubble in there which can be tear from the value. But then again, some people like the flaws in the art glass. So those two pieces, $7 a piece, I think you can get probably about 30 for the larger one, 35, and then maybe 25, 30 to the, for the smaller one. Like I said, not marked, but polished and buffed pontals, so you know it's high quality glass. So, Oh, I, I just have a thing for these bedside lamps. They do sell pretty well. They're not high-end market, 
but they're kind of cool. So my first one, let's see, I paid, oh, so there's three lamps and I only paid $8.26. So that's, you know, a pretty good buy. Um, the first being this clip-on 1960s pink. It's got fiberglass with the, with the white kind of spaghetti looking. It's got a wooden hand or a wooden on and off switch. It does work. Cord's in pretty good shape, but, um, you know, since I only paid about $350 for this, these, these will go for about $30, $35. Nice retro piece for a um, 1960s kitchen or bedroom redo. Then the next one is uh, the ivy pattern. That cord is well tangled up in there. And this too is like a, a headboard mount. I think it's either missing the clip-ons to it, or you would just have screwed this right into the wall above your bed. Um, it is in the ivy pattern. A lot of these that I've seen, the ivy is completely rubbed off. This one is in excellent shape. It's got the little pull chain on it. This too, probably from the 50s. Um, I blow, I think, probably about $35 on this one. And these will all go on Etsy. And then last in the same, same lot, this is not um, a bedside lamp. This is actually a desk lamp, but it's cast iron and these sell quite well. And there probably should have been like a, a dome, a half dome over here. But I was thinking what would look really cool in this is one of those Edison bulbs. And this would make just a really neat desk lamp. It's really art deco looking on the base. So this is probably more like 1920s. And there is a maker's mark on there, so I'll be able to look that up. Okay, so this next piece. I had to have it. One thing in the auction uh, details, it doesn't always list dimensions. I was thinking this was a book and I was thinking it was like a regular size book, you know, just a book that had like a shadow box inside of it. Well, it turned out to be much more than that. And um, I'm going to give you a look at it and then kind of tell you what I've done to try to find what the comps were for this. It is huge. Ugh. So if you look at it, the front picture is of oops, these three men's whistling. And I'm going to try to move this over so you can see it. And it's like a lithograph. It's not an actual drawing. It's a litho. Um, I'll move a couple of things out of the way. But it's huge. It's 21 by 17. Then you open it up, and boy, this is going to be hard in my limited space. And there is another page with a litho. I don't know. Can you even see it? I can't see. And then, anyways, there's three separate panels in here that I will lift up. So this is the one, it's like page one, and it has a lithograph on this one. And as you're pulling these up, it, you pull them up by fancy ribbons. They're all like velvet lined on the other side. Here's the second blank page. And then I'm gonna try to hold this up again. So here's the last page. You see the pretty, pretty ribbon brocade, brocade ribbon that you're gonna pull up. And then you pull it up. I'm fighting with this book. And it has the coolest shadow box. A lot of the items in the shadow box are very old. I'm gonna hold up again. Let 
you have a harmonica. There's a tin type photo. There is a, whoops. Tin soldiers here. Here's Roy Rogers, Dale Evans. It's hard to see, I'm getting a glare. The very centerpiece is the coolest. It's a glass slide of a bear in Yellowstone robbing a picnic basket. We have a horse. We have people hanging laundry out, old coins and a skeleton of a seahorse, some jacks, a streetcar. That was hard work. Like I said, this is a huge piece. I, I really thought it was smaller. So I posted it on a Facebook page of rare artwork and books. And so many people commented that it was truly one of a kind, that I did pay $48.38 for it. They said easily be able to triple the money, if not way more. I'm not going to list it on Etsy. One of the coins in there is dated 1990, so I can kind of tell that the era was in the 90s that somebody made this book. I don't know if it's a memory book, which are books that people make after someone's passed to remind them of the stages of that person's life. I have no idea. There's no markings on it, no signatures. It's exquisitely made. It, it's a superb piece. So this too, I'm gonna list on Etsy. From the post on Facebook um, for the rare art and, and books, several people asked that I please notify them when I listed it. So let's hope this one was a winner. I'm Like I said, I know nothing about it. I like to buy strange and unusual things because I think those usually sell the best. Um, we'll see how it goes. I'll let you know. So, okay, next thing, I'm not sure. It's a wooden shafted putter. So with the premium, I paid $11.80, I think. Leather handle, silver tip. It does say on the putter, it doesn't have a name brand, but it says chromium plated. We'll see. I think, I think I can probably ask $50 for it. It's going to be a little difficult to ship, but we'll figure it out. All right. Now this is a very unique piece. Um, like I said, I like to, what well, be, before I even bid on things, I like to look up and find comps. There is not one like this on the internet. I have looked all over. Nope, nothing. I can't find it. I can find a newer model, um, but this one's old. It's got to be from about the 20s, I would say. And what it is, is... A wonderful old neck strip barber jar. So it's a, the brand is Sanic and it says we use Sanic neck strips for cleanliness. Like I said, others of these and not just like this, same design, same aluminum lid, but decal was different, much, much newer, probably from the forties or fifties. And some of those went for $150. This one, I'm gonna bring it closer so you can see like the graphics on it. Do you see? It's way older than the 40s or 50s. I think it's gonna be the 20s. Barber things are very collectible. Unusual barber things even more so. Um, this too, I think I'm gonna list on Etsy. I have no idea what to, what to ask for it. And we'll so you know see how it goes. I ended up paying, say, twenty five for this. Um, I think I could easily bring two hundred dollars, but like I said, it just you know the bidding climate has to be right on eBay. Okay, so the next thing I bought, I got three things in this lot, and this is my favorite. 
by far. This too, I thought was going to be, you know, maybe six inches. He's about 13 inches and he's solid bronze. And he's a Roman gladiator. Yes. Oh, he's sitting on a marble, a marble stand. He's very handsome. He is probably, oh, he weighs nine pounds. It's very heavy. So shipping is going to be expensive, but you figure that in the price. I will probably list this on Etsy. Um, this whole lot I got for $15 and 30 cents and there's no markings on him. Can't find who made him. I would say he's probably mid century, you know, maybe 1960s, 70s. Very cool. And then in that same lot, I got, oh, this wonderful bronze elephant, only a single bookend. I did look him up. He's cast bronze, so not solid bronze, but cast bronze. He's from the 1920s. Um, I love him. I may keep him. The pair, if you'd have the second pair, they average between $100 and $150 for two of them. So I think this guy would probably go for around $60. I may keep him. The only thing I don't like is his trunk is down, which means bad luck. So maybe I'll sell him. Not sure. <laughs> and in that same, in the same one was this, which I'm sure is just a decorator piece. I don't, you know, it's a, a dagger, I guess, in a, I think this is, yeah, it's leather, but it's, you know, it's old and and kind of hard. I did put some leather conditioner on it. The guy on the top, some type of maybe a British soldier. And then the gold has been rubbed off the, the red there. Um, and like I said, decorative, because it's like composite wood on the back with a hanger. You know, I have no idea. I wasn't really bidding on this, so it was just kind of in the box. Not sure. We'll see. I, I'm not sure how much to list it for. Oh, and that same thing too. I got, that was the same box. These, however, do you see that round thing down there? That's the bottom of the body of this elephant or of this butterfly elephant. Elephants on my mind. It's his body. I don't think I can sell this the way it's damaged. So we'll probably donate it. Then my last box, um, I may have overpaid a little bit for this. And, you know, I don't know. It's just whatever. But it was a, blo a box of um, different glass things. Uh, this was in there. A stained plate or stained glass platter, I think. I, I mean, it could be a lamp lid. I, I don't really know. It's well done. So don't expect to get a lot for this, but we'll see. It is pretty. The next item in that that uh, lot was, oh, this was just kind of a throw in too, I think, but it is mid-century modern. A pretty vase. It says on the bottom, hand-decorated 22 karat gold made in the USA. Um, definitely like holly, or holly, oh, excuse me, <clears throat> Hollywood Regency style. So 1950s. It's a very small flea bite on it. Well, now I can hardly even see it. Oh, maybe right here. Um, I don't know, $20 probably. When you buy things in a lot, then it makes it easier to, um, to get your money back if one thing doesn't sell well. Because like that, I didn't even expect to be in there and it just was. Okay, then the next, these are Pyrex in the cranberry, some call it amethyst, but I do think it's cranberry, and it's nesting bowls from Pyrex. These are vintage, I'm not sure of the year, maybe 80s. They sell pretty well, since, and because I have the full set of four, um, easily $60 plus shipping, so probably around $75, $80, but they're in great shape, no chips. They'd look pretty during the holidays. And the last is always my favorite, the green depression where huge 
canister jar. This one has no tag on it, but it's in really good condition. It even has the original lid on it. My other, I have two others for sale. I don't believe those lids are original, but look at this baby glow. This one has lots of uranium in it. It really lights up under the black light. And most of these are, or this was made by Anchor Hawking back in the 30s. So that's how you thrift when there's a quarantine. Um, <clears throat> I don't think there's any other auctions coming up, but I have plenty of things to get listing. So um, I'll be busy. There are always things I can do. Stay well, stay safe, and happy thrifting. See you next time.